Let's continue with our sessions refactor. Today we're going to be refactoring the validation middlewares that still use the sessions super global like validation exception middleware which sets the errors and old form data into the session, the validation errors middleware which then uh, extracts the errors from the session and passes down to the twig templates, and the old form data middleware which does the same thing as the validation errors middleware. It basically extracts the old form data from the session and passes down to the twig templates. So let's work on the validation exception middleware first. In this middleware, we're flashing the data to the session. So why don't we do something like this session flash errors, and then this will simply just take this errors variable, and then we can duplicate that and flash the old form data this way. Now let's inject the session interface in our constructor. So we'll do private read only session interface session. Let's format the code. And now we need to create this flash method. So let's add this method in our session interface. We'll change these errors to messages. And it's going to be array type because we want to flash list of messages that are stored in an array. This is not going to return anything. And by the way, in the last video, I forgot to add uh, the has method to the interface. We had it in our session implementation, but I forgot to add it to the session interface. So I did that behind the scenes. Now you might be asking, why can't we just call the put method here instead of flash and do something like put errors and then put old this way. The answer is that yes, you could do that. There are different methods and ways that we could implement this. We could also create a brand new class called flash message or something like that and then have that be responsible for flashing messages. I want to keep things uh, simpler though and that's why I'm going to be implementing the flash method within the session class instead of having its own dedicated class. Now if you use the put method here this way, then when retrieving the errors within the validation errors middleware or the old data within the old form data middleware, then you would need to make sure that you call the forget method to unset or remove the flash data from the session. But instead of doing this, what I want to do instead is something like this. So I want to do errors equals this session get flash errors. And let this method be responsible for getting the flashed messages from the session and also handle the unsetting part of it. So we don't have to always add unset ourselves. So we can remove this and we can remove that. And this looks a lot cleaner. And we can do the same thing within the old form data middleware. So we can do if old equals this session get flash old we can get rid of this and we can get rid of that and old will be passed to twig this way now we of course need to inject the session interface so i'm going to copy this and put it right here let's format the code and we'll do the same thing in here so as you can see, this looks better than using the put and then forget method. I also want to basically save the flashed messages in its own some sort of bucket under the session super global. That way the flashed messages keys don't conflict with anything else that we store in our session. We might store something that is also called old but is not a flashed message and I don't want it to conflict with the flashed messages. That's why storing these into its own bucket or under its own key might be beneficial for us later on. So instead of doing put, again we're gonna do flash and do the same here. And we also need to add the get flash method to our interface and we'll call this key instead of string here and this will return array because we're flashing array of messages all right so let's now open the session implementation class and implement these methods so we scroll up here let's add these methods let's scroll down and we're going to do something similar to this, but again, we don't want to do it this way because we don't want it to conflict. We want to contain flashed messages under its own key, under some sort of bucket. So we're going to do something like flash and then store the key under it. And then we'll add messages in here. Now, I don't want to hard code this flash key here. Instead, why don't we make this be configurable the same way we uh, made the session name configurable through our config file. 
So instead, let's do this options flash name or flash key, it doesn't matter. And we need to add this to our options DTO. So we scroll up, we go to the session config, and we can just duplicate this name and call it flash name. And then wherever we are instantiating this DTO, which is within the container bindings configuration file, we'll duplicate this right here and we'll pass flash name config option. By default, we can set it to flash. Now let's open our app.php configuration file and we'll simply duplicate this, call it flash name. And we can use the app snake name the same way, but instead of underscore session, we can do flash or underscore flash session or something like that. All right, so I think this is good. Let's close this out. Let's scroll down in here and let's implement the get flash method. We will again use the flash name the same way. So actually let's copy this and we'll put it like this. And if it's not set, we'll just return an empty array. Then we'll handle the unsetting part. So we'll copy this and we'll do unset this way. And finally return messages. Let's search for the session super global. And as you can see, it is no longer used anywhere else in the code other than this session class, which is our implementation of the session interface. And this is great because that was our goal, right? We didn't want to uh, access sessions using the session super global throughout the code. We just wanted to have some sort of abstraction around the session so that we can access and work with sessions using the session class. So before we test this out, I want to do one more minor refactor in our validation exception middleware. Right now we are getting the referrer URL from the header and this may not always be set. And I also want to make sure and validate that the host that we are redirecting the user to matches to our own website and it does not redirect the user anywhere else. So instead of accessing the referrer URL this way, why don't we create some sort of server request service class with the method that will be responsible to get us the proper referrer URL and it will handle the validation and so on. So we can do something like this request service get refer and pass the request as an argument. Now let's inject this request service in our constructor. So we'll do private read only request service and let's create this class. We'll put it within the services namespace and let's create this get refer method. This has to return string. Now the first step is of course to get the refer the way we were getting it before. So we can do refer equals get server param HTTP refer. Actually there is a better way to get this instead of getting it from the server param. So we can do get header refer and this is an array. So we'll access the first element and let's use no coalescing operator in case that's not set. We'll set it to an empty string. Now, if the refer is not set for whatever reason, then we need to have some sort of fallback logic so that we can still redirect the user somewhere. We can use sessions for that. So we can do something like if not refer, return this session get previous URL. And we're going to set the previous URL in the session in just a minute. Let's inject the session interface within our constructor and let's open the start sessions middleware and see where we can set the previous URL in the session within this middleware. Now we can save the request URL that we can get from the request object within the session before calling the save method. So we can do this session put previous URL and we can get the URL by using the get URI method on the request object. Now this is a PSR interface. So if we inspect this, we see that it returns URI interface object. And then if we inspect that and scroll down, we see that it has two string method definition. That means that we can simply cast this to a string and it's going to give us the properly formatted URL. Now there is a problem with this because right now we are setting the previous URL every single time we start the session, even for non get requests. Like uh, if somebody makes a post request, it will set the previous URL in there. And we don't want to redirect the user to a post URL or some kind of Ajax request URL. We want to redirect the user only when they make a page request, which could be a get request. So we can do something like if request get method is get 
only then save the previous URL. Now we also need to check if it's an AJAX request or not and we haven't uh, implemented the AJAX request handling yet so I'm just going to add a simple to do here that we'll come back to this and we'll modify it whenever we get to the AJAX requests. Alright so let's go back to the request service and now we need to check the host of the refer URL and make sure that it matches to the request URL of the request. Now we can extract the host by using parse URL function so we can do refer host equals parse URL and then pass the referrer in there and we can pass PHP URL host constant. Then we can check if the refer host is not the same as the request get URI get host because remember the get URI returns URI interface and this again is a PSR interface and one of the methods that it provides is get host and the implementation whatever class implements that interface provides us with a get host method so we can check if the refer host is not the same as the request URL host then we can do something about it what we can do in this case is that we can override the refer URL and set it to the session value and then finally we can return the refer now this part right here is not always needed there are other ways to protect our application like having a CSRF protection and then using the proper uh, session and cookie options and so on but this is just an additional layer of check all right so let's test this out now let's go in here let's click on sign up Let's fill in the form, click register, and sure enough, we are redirected back and the validation works and the old form data works as well because they were saved in the session properly. If we refresh the page again, we see that the form is cleared because we are flashing the errors one time to the session. Now this means that this part is working as expected. Now I want to test this part to make sure that the previous URL from the session is working properly. So what I'll do is that I'm simply going to set this to an empty string so that this passes and then it should return the previous URL from the session. So let's go back here. Let's fill in the form again, click register and sure enough it is working the same way it is still redirecting us back to the register page if i refresh again the data is gone in the next video we're going to refactor the auth controller a little bit so that we can make our controllers thinner by maybe extracting the validation and putting it into its own class or something i don't know we'll see we'll get to that in the next lesson so thank you so much for watching if you found this video useful please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe it really helps the channel grow a lot faster thanks again and i'll see you next time